Nice that the wind isn't blowing. That was a factor we considered with all the wind this farm. That it could have been a wind farm, but thankfully it wasn't. I graduated from high school. I went in soon after partnership with father. We produced eggs, and then we decided we should be producing milk with all the acreage. And along with that, a cannery nearby, and we raised garden crops, uh, canning crops, as the egg market would become unprofitable and the canning factory uh, closed down. They're pretty much a hay farm and, I, and, and growing garden crops. So I, I just, my life is embedded in agriculture and I appreciate the what the soil can produce if man will just, you know, be a good steward. So I guess you say I'm, I try to be a good steward of my land and my property and it's challenging but rewarding. Pretty soon the cows will be out here too. One of the many problems facing most small farms is that the cost of grain, the cost of health, the cost of maintenance, the cost of diesel, it just goes on and on and on. And so I think that all small farmers have had tough decisions to make. I think you have to have an outside income if you are a small farmer. My mom taught school for 32 years and that was a, a given income. And I think that if you talk to any small farms, they would tell you that you have to have a dependable income and then you can hope for the best when you plant a crop. It doesn't always mean that you're going to get the results that you had hoped to. When my sister and I took ownership of the farm, we knew somewhere down the road that we were gonna to have to make different choices than what dad made when he was farming. And the solar presented itself and we asked dad his views and his thoughts on it. And he too felt like that 20 acres had supplied a lot of different things over the years and that this was probably a good decision for the farm. Dad will turn 98 on June 29th. It's wonderful that he could be a part of this decision making. He knows what is going to happen to the farm and that the farm is financially secured because of having the solar array. Ten years ago, I would have vetoed it. I was still farming quite vigorously and my hay customers used to number 40, they're below 20 now. The herds have been dispersed, people getting older or finding some other source. And with the decreased demand for hay, in my age, uh, it seemed to be a, a good angle to go to. So these are what are called grid-tied solar systems. They're interconnected to the utility grid. This solar array provides power for five schools around the region. The five schools, one of them is here in, in this town, but the other four schools are around this portion of Maine. The solar is not directly connected to those loads. The solar is connected to the grid, and the grid brings the power to, to, those, to those schools, to those off-takers. And so what happens is whenever the sun is out, the solar is making power and is generating electricity here, which is fed back into the grid, and the utility meter here is generating credits, which are then applied on the bills of the off-takers, of the customers. It was important to us that the school systems were involved for many reasons, but personally, because my mom taught school for over 30 years, it just seemed like a nice dedication to give back to education, and it was meaningful to us. We're thrilled, I, and we can't think of a better uh, purpose for energy than educating young people. They, they are our future. What's really happened is the cost of solar to the consumer, to the customer, has really dropped by this 90% over the past few years. So that now, in many states, in Maine in particular, the cost of buying solar power from a solar farm is less than the cost of buying solar power or buying power from the utility grid. People that are typically against solar maybe don't understand it. I, I think. It, it does change the aesthetics of a piece of property, or can, um, and people are very resistant to change, but uh, change is inevitable, and 
this seems to be a positive way to do it. But it's also so exciting, particularly parts of Maine like that, which have not really had a new industry come in for a long time when people are really looking for jobs and new forms of employment. It's great to be able to bring in a whole new dynamic, exciting industry, which is not only is not polluting, it's cleaning our air and water. Yeah, I planted that tree there. You look at the buds on the rhododendron. I know, I know. Things are coming out. <laughs> All of a sudden, they just popped. For the next 25 years, the farm is secured, and that's important to us. That little bit of 20 acres out of 135 protects the rest of the farm so that we can continue to hay or plant vegetables or whatever we decide to do. And Dad's going to try to see if he can get a parsnip out of there. Joyce Gilmer wrote a poem, Trees. I can remember part of it. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A tree that looks to God all day and lifts its leafy arms to pray. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's free-flowing breast. Period. <laughs> This farm has produced crops and hay for many years, and now it's producing electricity from farming the sun. 